My name is Kristen and I am the Community Engagement Manager here for the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy. The AWSC is a nonprofit based in Cape Cod, specifically in Chatham in Massachusetts, where we are helping to fund and conduct the Great White Shark research that is being done through the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries with Dr. Greg Skolmel. And with that research, we are hoping to provide more information and education about white sharks here along not just our coastline off of Cape Cod, but throughout the East Coast of the United States to promote the conservation of these animals in our waters. But today, guys, we are going to be talking about an engineering challenge. So I'm just going to get my screen share up and going this morning. So with that, we are going to be looking at our design challenge. But first off, before we get into our design challenge, I have to ask you a few questions first. And also here is our worksheets for today, just so you know what they look like. But like I said, you don't need to use those worksheets during the lesson today. And here are those suggested materials. As, as it said, these are suggested. A lot of the materials that I'm using today are not on this list, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle, use what you guys have around your house for this engineering design challenge today. So first off, we have to talk about underwater exploring and how do scientists explore underwater? So what do you guys think? How do we think that scientists explore underwater? Hmm. What do we think? Now there are a few different ways that scientists can explore what's underneath our oceans and on the ocean floor or swimming throughout those ocean zones that Marianne talked about yesterday. And one of those ways are submarines. And this is a really great way for us humans to be able to go into those deep depths and those lower ocean zones because as humans, we can't dive very deep if we're just in our scuba gear. But if we are in a submarine, we are able to go to deeper depths to be able to explore animals in those deeper underwater environments that we might not be able to explore with just some scuba gear on ourselves. And in this photo, you do see an oceanographer and ocean explorer of Sylvia Earle, and she is one of the more famous underwater explorers and she has done many, many dives in her lifetime. And this is a photo showing one of the dives that she went on in one of those submarine devices. We can also explore un underwater by cameras. So as scientists, you can bolt a camera down on the ocean floor and making sure that it is waterproof and then you are able to explore what is under the water just by watching that camera, as you can see here in this photo. And with that, these cameras are really cool because they can be live streamed, just like how we are live streaming right now, or these photos, these cameras can take photos or just record a video so scientists can come back, obtain that camera, and then be able to watch back what that video is recording. You might see a lot of aquariums live stream their underwater videos for the public to see that can't make it to the aquarium as well. And also we can use collecting devices to explore our underwater oceans and our underwater world. And that can either be done by, you know, these hydraulic arms that are seen in this photo here by being able to be designed to still move and pick things up underwater and then be able to put them in collecting containers so that scientists are able to study things from the deep. Now these collecting devices can be attached to those submarines that scientists are on and they can be maneuvering these collecting devices from right inside the submarine or what's even cooler is that you can actually deploy these kinds of collecting devices from your boat 
and they are attached to your boat by a line, but then they sink down to the bottom of the ocean and you can actually control that arm from you just standing on your boat, which is really cool. And it's pretty awesome to see how our technology has, has evolved that you can be standing on a boat and still be able to collect specimens and collect different kinds of sediment or rocks that are on the ocean floor. But today guys, for our engineering design challenge that we are doing, we have to go over what is the engineering design process first. And the first thing that we have, have to do is when we are trying to design something, well, let me move myself over, is that we have to identify the problem. So what constraints do you have and what is your goal? So with that, maybe your problem is, oh, I have to try to collect sediment from the sea floor. So that is your, what your goal is to collect that set sediment. But what are your constraints? Maybe you have a budget or how much money that you can spend. Maybe you only have a certain kind of materials that you are allowed to use. So first we have to identify our problem. And then we next have to brainstorm. So we have to think about how are we going to obtain this final product of a design that we are trying to achieve. So we can look at other designs, consult experts and do our own research. We can consult experts and see what have they done in this situation, what worked for them, what didn't work for them, what was successful? What do they recommend to be able to help in your design and what you are doing? Now, when I say look at other designs, I am not saying to look, look at a design and copy it and call it as your own, but maybe we are looking at these designs to draw ideas of how we, we, we can bring things to improve ours. And this is why we consult these experts. Next, we have to plan. So maybe that's sketching your design, identifying your materials, writing out what you are going to be using to build your design of what you're thinking of creating. And also you yeah, have sketching that design. You just don't wanna bring all the materials together and then throw it together and hope that it works. We wanna have a plan. So we wanna draw out what we are thinking about building, maybe looking at measurements as well to see how much materials we need to build that end product. And then we have to build it. So after we plan it, we want to start building our end result. But with this guys, we wanna make sure that we always start small, make a prototype before we start that full project. And that prototype can be, you know, something small to test to see if the larger design would work. As scientists and engineers, sometimes we do have limited materials and a limited budget, and we don't have a lot of money to spend. So if we build the full project and then we test it and it doesn't work, well then sometimes maybe we don't have enough money to fix it or rebuild it. So this is why a lot of en engineers and scientists will start small and then be able to work their way up in testing before building the main model. Then we have to test what we built. So we wanna test our model. We want to evaluate those results. If your test failed, we wanna learn from our mistakes and redesign. So when we are testing this, if something is working well, we wanna take down that note. So we remember what worked in our tests. If something didn't work, as it says, it's okay. A lot of scientists, when they run experiments, doesn't all work out right the first time, but that is why we do science, you know, to be able to learn from things and be able to grow and then to be able to make things better. So if something does fail on our test, then we wanna take that note and then step back and look at our design and say, what can we do to make this design better? So that part doesn't fail the next time. If we do have something failing in our test, we want to 
redesign. And the reason I have a question mark is because sometimes maybe you are happy with what you built and you do not need to redesign something, but usually we got to redesign something in some way. And if maybe your test was successful, step back and think, well, how can I even make this better? What can I do to make this stronger? So there's always ways that we can be improving our own designs. And then last but not least is sharing it. So we wanna share our observations and results with others. So even when we create something awesome, do we wanna keep it to ourselves? No, we wanna share that with everybody so that maybe what you, you designed can help somebody else in their own project as well. So today, our experiment is going to be don't get the tech wet. And with that, now that we are learning about that engineering design process, we have to think about our first, our first step is identify the problem. So our problem today for don't get the tech wet is that we need a way to observe sharks feeding on the ocean floor at night. Now you're probably thinking, well, if it's on the ocean floor and maybe it's at a depth where we can dive to, why do we need a way to observe them? Well, as scientists, maybe we don't wanna be scuba diving at night. Sometimes that is not very safe for a diver to, to be doing, but also that's a very long time to be di diving underwater, especially at night. So we need to find a way to observe sharks feeding on the ocean floor at night. We have a camera to record the sharks, but it is not waterproof. So remember how we, when we are identifying our problem, we're looking at our constraints. So one of our constraints is that we have a camera, but it's not waterproof. And our next thing is that it has to stay anchored down to the ocean floor. So with that, we have a camera that is not wa waterproof and we need to create a way for it to stay on the bottom of our ocean floor. Because if it doesn't stay anchored at the bottom of the ocean floor, we could lose our camera and lose all the recording of sharks feeding. So now we have to brainstorm and we have to think what can we do to solve the problems that we are given well the first thing that we can do is we have to create an underwater housing for our camera so it can still work and record these sharks now there are some cameras like a gopro that are waterproof or other versions that do come with underwater housing, but there's other cameras that do not. So we first have, have to think of a way to create something of a way to protect our camera. And then we also have to create something that is going to keep it anchored to the bottom of the ocean floor so it doesn't float away or get taken away by those currents. And now we have to plan. So this is when I want you guys to be looking around your house, looking for some materials and things like that of how can we make something waterproof. Now I do not want you to go take your phone or mom and dad's phone or an iPad or anything electronic and sticking it in the water. Please do not do that. But maybe today we are going to look at how to keep a cotton ball from getting wet. So that is going to be my material that I am testing of not getting wet. So we're gonna start planning, looking at our materials, looking at what we can test to see if the device you made is waterproof or not. And then we have to build that. And so for today, I did show and create some things and start building different things that we can use to test if the device we made is waterproof or not. So first off, 
I did show in our materials to have a plastic bag and not have it be a Ziploc or something sealable. And then, like I said, we have to use our materials that we have around us. So I do have a bag, but it is a Ziploc bag that I did make sure it was open because if it's sealed, it's pretty gonna be pretty waterproof, but we wanna make sure that there is a way to test if our device is waterproof. So if you do have a Ziploc bag, just make sure that it's open. So first part of building is I grabbed my bag. Maybe it's not a bag at home. Maybe it's tin foil or plastic wrap or something else that you can create to encapsulate your cotton ball. So I first created this. So I have my cotton ball inside my plastic baggie and then I tried to twist it and I sealed it with a pipe cleaner. So these are, these are the materials that I have. I also have some beads with me. I have tape. I have some balloons. I also have a wiffle ball. I have some, I have some ping pong balls as well. So these are these kinds of materials that maybe you have around your house, but if you do not, that's okay. You can use what you have around your house. But afterwards, what we are going to do is that we have to build a prototype. And we first have to look at if that prototype is going to sink. But with that, looking and seeing if our prototype is going to sink, I first want, want to make sure before I sink my device that it's going to stay waterproof. So I am going to move back my laptop a little bit bring in my bucket of water. I'm gonna move this down a little bit just so you can kind of see that bucket there. And we're gonna dunk our device into the bucket. So for this, always make sure you have a towel around so you can dry off your hands and your device when they are done. So we're going to dunk our device in now Something that could also help to see if your cotton ball got wet is to dye your water. If you have food dye at home, again, we're using what, what, what we have here and we do not have food dye here. So now that we are testing that, we wanna make sure that we shake off our device, pat off any water that dripped. We're gonna dry off our device and now we can see if our cotton ball got wet or not inside. So what we can do, I'm going to untie my pipe cleaner. If I can untie my pipe cleaner. And we are going to see if it got wet or not. Now from looking inside, it does feel a little damp, my cotton ball. So I know going back to our engineering design process that we can look at our results and redesign. So what I did, because I had a feeling that just using a pipe cleaner wasn't gonna be a tough enough seal for our cotton ball here. I did make another design already. So with this, you guys can go around your house, find something else that can maybe better your design. When I thought about it, I thought, hmm, maybe a zip tie would work. So I made sure to tie my zip tie nice and tight around our cotton ball. So again, my Ziploc bag is not closed. And let's now test this one. So again, we're just going to dunk our device into the water. And then we are going to just drip it off so we don't get water all over ourselves. Dry it off. And then we can look at our device. Now with this, boys and girls, to so try to get a zip tie off, please ask a parent if you cannot use scissors because you will need sharp scissors to try to cut this. So always make sure you do have an adult buy. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to cut this off. So I am just gonna cut my plastic baggie. So 
to look at our cotton ball. And our cotton ball is nice and dry, which is great. So now we know that using a zip tie is going to be the better option to keep our cotton ball dry. So I'm gonna put our cotton ball back in our other bag. I'm gonna dry out my bag. And with that, let's start sharing our screen again. So our next thing that we have to do is look at a prototype that sinks. So now that we know that we are gonna be able to keep our cotton ball nice and dry, now we have to see how can we get our cotton ball to sink to the bottom of our ocean. Because as our design challenge stated, we have to keep something that is waterproof, but also having it be able to stay at the bottom of our ocean. So how do you think I'm gonna be able to keep my plastic baggie at the bottom of my fake ocean here? What do you think? What kind of materials could we use to sink our plastic baggie? Hmm, what do we think? Now, maybe you're saying something that's heavy, that has weights to it, and you are correct. So I do have, again, some pipe cleaners with me, and I have just some washers and nuts here. So maybe if you have anyone that is handy around, around, around your house, you can use these as weights to anchor down your device. So for this, I am going to anchor my weights onto my plastic bag. And we are going to see if this keeps our device down at the bottom of my ocean here. I'm gonna move this back a little bit so you can see. And flap it in. And if we're looking, it's not sinking yet. If maybe we push it down a little bit, it's still, it's still not staying on the, my ocean floor. So if we're looking at this and through our design process, now we are reevaluating. So now that we're seeing that my device is not sinking, what should I do? What should I do to make my device be able to stay on the bottom of the ocean floor? What do you guys think? If you are saying to add more weight, yeah, we gotta add more weight to see where, or how much weight I should say, that we need to add to make sure that our device sinks. So I'm going to untie our little weight device and I'm going to grab a couple more washers and weights to see if that will do it. And with this guys, in science sometimes, you know, we have to play around with measurements. We have to play around with how much things are added. So I added three more nuts to our device to see if that will make it sink or not. So with this guys, this is a way that we are looking at this design and engineering process and looking at our design, how we can reevaluate it, how we can make things better. So now we added more weight. Let's see. And it sunk to the bottom. So now we have a device that keeps our mock camera, our cotton ball waterproof, but then also makes it stay to the bottom of the ocean floor. So I'm going to move this just out of the way for now so we can continue talking about our next steps here. So now that we have a prototype that sinks, now you can even expand this to, can we make a prototype that floats? And I'm gonna leave this open to you guys. So how then, now we know that we can make something sink, but how can we make this device float? So we want to make sure that when a device is floating in the water that is still anchored to the ocean floor, because if it's floating, then it can just be taken away by a wave or an ocean current. So we need something that is going to stay buoyant in our water column. 
but also be able to float, but also stay anchored. So we know that we have a device that's gonna keep our system anchored to the floor, but now what can we add onto it to make it float? Maybe it is using, for us today, maybe a wiffle ball or a ping pong ball, because these do float on top of the water. But I want you guys to be able to expand on this en engineering design and see what you guys can think up of. And we have already tested our results. We redesigned a few times our engineering design and now we can share it. So as, we, as I said, my engineering design today did not work the first time by just using a pipe cleaner to make our, our cotton ball sealed. But when I reevaluated my plan, I saw that a twist tie or a zip tie made it stronger. So as you guys are doing your results, this is how you can share your design and what was successful and what was not successful. So with that, boys and girls, that is my engineering design challenge for you guys today. I want you to create a device to keep your mock camera waterproof. And I, then if you guys want to share that with us today, please do. We would love to see what designs you guys created today at home. So thank you guys for joining us today again. My name is Kristen and you are watching the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy's Shark Enrichment Programs. So thank you guys for joining us and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.